that they dropped 7.5 million tons of bombs on Vietnam, Laos, and Cambodia, that still today, those bombs are still being cleaned up because there's been, where so many bombs were dropped. Hi, this is Anita from the Dusty Roads podcast. As many of you may know, I live here in Hanoi, Vietnam. And because I live in Hanoi, Vietnam, of course, I'm interested in Vietnam, and in particular, the Vietnam War, or what they call over here, the American War. I want to talk a little bit about U.S. companies, and in particular, U.S. companies that actually profited from the Vietnam War. This is kind of a little bit of a dirty secret that many Americans don't think about it. We think about it, but we don't really want to talk about it. So today I want to talk a little bit about it. If you're interested, I wrote a blog on this from my blog, A Bus on a Dusty Road. And the blog is entitled, What U.S. Companies Profited from the Vietnam War? It was quite interesting for me when I did this blog and I did the research for the blog because I actually went on a lot of these companies' websites, the ones that I'm going to talk about. And I actually went on there to look at their history. You know, they would mention a bit about their history. And almost all of them glossed over the Vietnam War, even though for many of these companies, the Vietnam War or the Vietnam conflict, as we called it, made them extremely wealthy. One of the top companies is Brown and Roots. And Brown & Roots was a Texas-based defense contractor that many saw as really profiting during the Vietnam War. Today, it's known as um, Kellogg Brown & Roots. And it was, you know, gave the U.S. President Lyndon Johnson a blank check when he ran for the U.S. Senate. Because of this and because of President Johnson's connections to Brown & Roots, there's many people that really questioned about Johnson and the Vietnam War. Brown and Roots essentially had the contract to build everything in Vietnam when it came to like roads and airports and bridges and you know all the you know different bases and other things. In other words, they were a huge, huge contractor here that made a lot of money off of the war. I can tell you that now whenever you fly anywhere in South Vietnam, we're usually landing on airstrips or air bases that once were American airline bases or American airports. You know, they would be things that America had built and they would actually be something which someone like Brown and Roots would have profited from. You know, President Johnson, the U.S. President Johnson was known to steer all contracts to Brown and Roots for all federally funded projects during the Vietnam War. So you can imagine that essentially this company made probably not just millions, but billions of dollars off of the Vietnam War. Another one was Bell Helicopter. And you know, Bell Helicopter was someone who also made a lot of money. You know, every night on the nightly news during the Vietnam War, there'd be sounds of those helicopter blades and they'd give updates about the war. And the Bell helicopters, they were constantly making helicopters because the helicopters, of course, are being shot down. So they're constantly resupplying the helicopters. They made several helicopters for the Vietnam War era. So this would have translated into millions and millions of dollars for them to profit for the war. Another one was Dow Chemical. And this one is kind of one that's sort of a little bit, I I guess you'd say like Dow Chemical doesn't really talk much about this part of their history. And the reason is, is because of the chemicals they were producing. You know, before the Vietnam War era, Dow Chemical was kind of this sort of small, not a really large chemical company in Midland, Michigan. But then when the war came, they started producing two chemicals. One was called the Agent Orange, which, by the way, still today, you can still see effects of Agent Orange in birth defects in many parts of Vietnam where this Agent Orange was sprayed. And also another one called Nepalm. So Nepalm was also another agent which is extremely destructive that basically you know, the Nepalm would make it so that the human flesh would just basically burn off and would look like raw meat. You know, Dow Chemical, that was once a small chemical company, has now become 
a major chemical company is essentially because of their involvement in the Vietnam War or the Vietnam conflict. Another one was McDonnell Douglas. And, you know, before the Vietnam War, there was a company called McDonald and there was one called Douglas and they were both, you know, aircraft companies that were sort of struggling. Then they joined together and they became one of the biggest financial winners of the Vietnam War era. You know, these two struggling defense contractors, they joined their efforts and they formed what became one of the largest aircraft companies worldwide. And they became a significant supplying aircraft for the US military to, for the Vietnam War effort. Both of these companies that were, you know, once struggling almost into bankruptcy became very viable where they're still operating today and they made millions, if not billions, off of their effort from the Vietnam War. Lockheed Corp, which is also known today as Lockheed Martin, is also another company was really able to build a lot of aircraft during the Vietnam War, and they were the ones that were building the reconnaissance planes, and they actually earned a lot of money off of the Vietnam War effort. A company that many of us know today is Boeing, and Boeing produces, of course, a lot of the aircrafts that we fly on. But Boeing also became a major player because of the Vietnam War and the airplanes that they were producing. They were most well known for producing the plane, which is the B-52 bomber. And, you know, here in Hanoi, there was this little um, back street where you'd go, and there's a pond, and in the pond was a tail end of a B-52 plane sticking up, and they used to call it the B-52 pond. You know, but these B-52 bombers, they had so many bombing raids over North Vietnam, Laos, and Cambodia that they dropped 7.5 million tons of bombs on Vietnam, Laos, and Cambodia that still today, those bombs are still being cleaned up because there were so many bombs were dropped. So when you think about the Vietnam War, you know, you think about many of these major companies who profited so much during this war, and probably in many cases, because of the war, there's still companies that are operating today. But what's really interesting to me is they don't talk about it. They don't admit it. They, and, and they're really doing nothing. I don't see them doing much here. Let me just say I don't see them doing much here in Vietnam itself to try to make a difference. I don't see them trying to say, like, I'm going to have a social conscious. I'm going to do something here to be able to help with this. I'm going to try to somehow help the people that have been affected by Agent Orange. You just do not see that here. What this also shows is that war, in many cases, is big business. And it is such big business that companies that were once struggling now become viable, they become major corporations, and they earn not just millions, but billions of dollars off the death and destruction which their machinery, their products, and their other things caused. This, in a way, is the real story of the Vietnam War, is that it helped to ensure that there were many American companies that became profitable off of the Vietnam War effort. If you'd like to be able to read more, you can read our blog about this, about the companies that profited off the Vietnam War. Go to A Bus on a Dusty Road. We'll put a link below. Thank you so much for listening. We really do appreciate you. And, you know, consider to follow us, subscribe to our our podcast. We'd love to have you become part of our community. We're all about living life as a global citizen, and we hope that you will join with us to live your life as a global citizen. Thank you so much for listening.